Bitcoin has finally risen above $50,000, hitting this major pivot target that we had back from December 2021. As you can see, we have now taken out that high and currently trading back down below on this weekly chart. So this is a major pivot that can be deciding whether now for the next few months, we are actually going to be looking for a reversal trading back down or actually whether we can close the week strong and get a continuation of this very bullish uptrend going into all-time highs and of course the halving in this video i'll be explaining to you of course my opinions predictions and trades that are upcoming for the next few weeks to the next few months so this is going to be a nice longer term outlook as we discuss this major pivot from a technical analysis and trading point of view so I hope that you really enjoy this video and I hope that you can learn a lot from it, to be honest. I'll give you my full, full transparency and honesty when it comes to my trades and bias in this video, too, of course, as always. And what I want to do is, you know, make this video in a first section, which will be discussing the past few days of price action so you can fully understand the context, because that context is what is leading into the decision and bias that I have right now. So I will explain the context and, of course, educate you of how I read the market and then we'll move on to exactly what I am looking at next for yeah potentially the next few months as we do go into the halving of Bitcoin so very exciting indeed right um, so let's start off by reviewing this price action moving on to the next trades and targets that I have so first of all I want to ask you a question to get your mind thinking as we start here and that is Really simply, we all know that there's a common statistic thrown around that 95% of traders lose money. So the vast majority of people that try to trade actually end up losing. And I feel that there is, you know, three or four major factors behind this. Number one would be just poor discipline. Okay, so even people that have learned to trade, you know, they've put in time to study, they just lack the discipline to follow through on it. You know, they'll understand the theory would be, you know, they have to remain patient for high confluence, but they end up just taking trades. Poor risk management, okay, is another major factor. So they kind of fall in together, like lack of discipline of, of remaining patient, following your trading plan, and then just simply bad risk management, going all in on one trade, entering their whole balance on a trade, you know, using too much leverage. Those all fall in to lack of discipline and a lot of people lose money even though they have the technical know-how they just lack the discipline actually when it comes to taking those trades okay another big factor uh, in my opinion of course would be lack of education the people that just simply are too new to this to know how to consistently trade well okay that's you know a lot of, a lot of people as well and i would say that a final or not final but another big factor would be people that are following like the really large influencers that really don't have people's best interests at heart okay you can continuously see time over time that you can refer to it as counter traders you know um they will say something and the opposite happens and you probably may or may not know this but there's this guy called jim kramer it's a little bit of a, a meme now that everything he kind of says is <laughs> is can be counter traded but a lot of people has one of the biggest followings when it comes to trading right a lot of people are following this guy's calls, but it's become like pretty apparent that he is <laughs> regularly wrong. And I want to explain something that's, that's, of course, a little bit funny, but also very technical indeed what it came on the chart of Bitcoin. And you may have noticed that he was like warning people very, very far from the Bitcoin bottom, like very bearish posts. This was back on the 18th of January. I actually made a uh, comment which had uh, some pretty nice interactions. Um, I will be honest with you all. This is lining up for a fake out of the range low to get everybody fearful and scared. And then another big pump to the upside above $50,000. Don't forget my plan because Jim, with his bearish bias here, will get you wrecked. Okay, and this is what it looked like at the time. So we were back in this section of the chart, 18th of January, right here. OK, we were looking for this scenario and this is where I go. The majority of people get wrecked because, you know, the look at this over one point six million views. Very, very bearish warnings. Well, we're near the bottom of the range. So what it's lining up for is a fake out. So then everybody following this is like, wow, yes, Jim was right. This is really bearish. It's time for short. We are very far from the bottom. It's going to get a very big drop. You get this fake out where people get very bearish at the lows. But you have to remember the plan that I have shared is a fake out before a big pump above 
$50,000 to take out that major liquidity. And you can see how that played out. It took a few days, but then around, you know, the 22nd, 24th, we got the fake out of January and then the rise obviously into February above $50,000. So this is just saying that you have to remember be really careful with who you follow, right? Because a lot of people are kind of <laughs> just plain wrong. And some of those people are real well-respected traders. So that's just something to also bear in mind. Like, uh, you know, be careful who you follow. That's just say that. And with that fake out of the range level, it really gave us this liquidity and strength. After we broke out of this triangle, it was kind of fake out, triangle consolidation, reclaim the weekly. And of course, that's why I flipped extremely bullish. And then we were able to remain patient for now, this very large move to the upside above $50,000. And so that was just so you can see visually the range that we had marked out here. Okay, that was the fake out of the range. And now you can see us trading at around $52,000, right? So what we then have to analyze and be aware of in terms of the context is this last leg of the move here, where we're now entering a new consolidation phase, right? So how would we get to that consolidation phase? This is understanding the context. Of course, at the time we're trading just ever so slightly in and around $50,000. And there are a few posts that I'd like to refer you to here uh, that I made to my champions members in live in the time, like my thought process. And this was as we were actually tapping the yearly high. If you remember in my last video, I was very bullish as well. And I was looking for new yearly highs. Okay. And as we hit new yearly highs, I tell my team really simply, yeah, no, not shorting here on Bitcoin as I've done for the majority of this move, right? Just not shorting Bitcoin, no interest, no bearish reactions. And everybody's shorting the very local SFP that we had here. Okay. So it was an SFP of the yearly high little bit of consolidation. I felt everybody that's shorting that swing failure pattern are going to be stopped out as we are going to be going above $50,000. As we can see, uh, it was a nice decision in the end as we did get that move above the yearly high and working our way onto $50,000. And this was a pattern that I want to share with you next where we top out at exactly $49,999 Coinbase buy bit, tapping out right on that level. And for me, it was a very nice, easy decision too, uh, to really simply uh, remain long and chill. Of course, I am not shorting and I'm still expecting us to go through 50,000. But this area of consolidation, once again, just another uh, bearish trap to really in shorts and continue this upwards, upwards momentum that we have. So it's really simple when it comes to trading, you know, you have to Remember, why do the majority of people lose? Because they're not disciplined. They have bad risk management. They don't remain patient. You can see a lot of my posts of the success that I'm getting with this trend is by recognizing the charts, understanding my levels, looking at the reactions, and ever so, you know, very big part of this is remaining patient. You know, I'm not becoming excited. I'm not becoming fearful or scared or worried when I'm getting pullbacks prior to my targets, but I am remaining patient and following my trading plan, which is of course very bullish. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've got this plan, which is like long and chill, look for higher, wait for my levels and, you know, really simply not be dragged into shorts where I feel there's a lot of traps happening just like this one that we actually saw. So this was prior to hitting this $51,000 zone. We broke $50,000. We formed a bit of consolidation. You got this large pullback. So what do you think is happening here again? This was on the 13th of February. A lot of people at this time are going to be very fearful. Yes, we could absolutely go lower here. But the thing that you do not want to be dragged, well, of course you could be. At the end of the day, you can make your own decisions. But one thing that I am understanding here is, when I see such a big level, which was the weekly around 51K, I really feel it's a very low probability that it's going to be overall front run. So this is a pullback to once again generate liquidity uh, for prices to come higher. And, and this is where you have to be very much, um, you have to be very strong in your confidence of your trading plan. Okay. Understand, yes, there can be an invalidation. I could be wrong. But for me, when I'm seeing this move down, I'm telling my team, really simply of the champion members, I am not worried and I am not shorting this drop. For me, it's still holding the higher lows and I am still expecting my higher targets to be hit. So then really simply, you know, I can go to sleep, sleep like a baby. Even though we're seeing a large drop to the downside, I'm not in any short trades. I'm still expecting higher. I'm remaining in all my long trades.
okay and that's just because i have my trading plan i know my invalidations and i have great confidence in the probabilities that higher prices and my higher targets will be hit and you can see here that you know in the in the midst of a very large drop which is going to be generating a lot of fear fake out potentially a fifty thousand dollars right you can see that this is how i can inspire confidence in allowing uh, the champion members to have this you know view in insights into my trades what i'm doing in the time and it really can aid people not to get worried not to short the lows but actually to remain bullish and expecting higher prices to come and just remain relaxed okay and you know long and show at the end of the day but you can understand but but by remaining relaxed confident and just explaining to people what's happening it removes that fear right and with that fear why do a lot of people lose where well, it comes back down to the emotional side of trading right they can understand the theory okay they can understand why you wouldn't want to short here but when you're looking at this in the time and it's a large drop and you're you know there's a lot of fear it's easy to press that short button right and that's the wrong in my opinion it was the wrong trade to be taking and i hope that you know by me coming in here and telling my team i'm not worried i'm not shorting that is how i can inspire confidence to the champions to stick to the trading plans that they have set right and we can see that was a right decision again as this was the little bit of a fake out that we were looking at here as we pump back up again towards that larger target that we had of the weekly which was really nice because we simply went straight through it so there was no short opportunity to be had at the weekly 1618 extension and now we enter our new consolidation phase here so now i'm going to start to move and talk about what i'm looking at next so i hope that you enjoyed the first you know 12 minutes of this video where i've talked you through the context of the rise how at each level that we've hit on the way up i've decided to not short to remain long and remain sticking to my plan of higher prices will be coming and each time we've hit those higher prices i've made informed decisions based off of the order flow and the simple chart itself to continue to look for higher and not enter those short trades as well as the nice uh, fake out prediction thank you uh, for the help jim on that one but now we can start to look at exactly what we're looking at next so what we're going to do here is we're going to come down on a 30 minute chart and the first thing that i want to add in <clears throat> okay is our parallel channel so this is you know you know you all know me right i love to trade parallel channels and i love to trade sideways ranges and what we're always looking for that even in the midst of a very strong uptrend there is always going to be periods of consolidation here we've now been going on for a few days right but even if you're looking at uh, a lower term time frame for example here you will have lower term time frame consolidation it could be on the one minute chart but there's always even during periods of trends there will always be sideways consolidation and that's where i view you get the best trade opportunities okay and it's during that consolidation so as a very low term time frame trader you'd be on the one minute chart even lower okay trading that low term time frame consolidation as more of a day or swing trader you can be here on the 30 minute four hour charts waiting for those higher term time frame consolidate or no, it's not higher term time frame i'd call this more medium or day trader term time frames to look for your trades for example you form a range low range high you take out this range high and then you come back to the range point of control and you just enter this period of consolidation so this is where i feel that you got the best best trade opportunities and as you all know i will always say trade the range until it breaks and that means looking for your shorts at range high you've already had one successful short of a range high failed auction and then you look for range low where of course there you have long trade opportunities back up to range high where you have a short trade back down to range low where you have a long trade and we say trade the range until it breaks because we know this range is not going to last forever so if you short the high you know if you did short a high this time <clears throat> you would have had a successful profitable trade because you would have locked in take profit one already off at a range point of control okay and to do that you can just pull a fixed range here you can see very nicely poc value area low absolutely this is where you'd be locking in a tape profit one this is over a one percent move off of that failed auction so the thing that you'd be you know let's let's say we move up to range high again and you short again and let's say you short range high 
And this time, instead of hitting take profit one, we continue to the upside. Well, that would have ended in one winner, one loser. Okay, that would have ended maybe a bit of a break even overall. Okay, but what you have to remember is we could hit range high again and we get another fake out to the upside and then you get one win, two wins. And so you trade the range until it breaks. You never know when for 100% certainty, right? You never know with 100% when that range is going to break. So we trade the range until it breaks. And let's say it does push up here and we get no short opportunity because we flip it into support. Well, then you took one trade short and it won because you hit take profit one. And then you move up and you break out. And then that range has broken. So you look for your next higher price target. You know, I, I really hope that makes sense. Uh, of course, it was a very quick explanation. We could go into much more in-depth detail, but essentially that's what I mean by trade the range until it breaks. You, you you trade the range until you actually see just a visual break on the chart, and that's where you'll look for your next higher target to the upside, or if it breaks to the downside, you look for your next target to the downside, okay? So I have some really nice levels that I want to share with you in terms of my next targets uh, to the up and downside. And, you know, as a trader, I'm always prepared for those scenarios. Uh, before that, I want to do one very quick announcement for you. And that is just to recognize uh, some real positive comments that we've been having recently. And, you know, just to make you all aware that, you know, this year we've come back and, you know, really upped our level of professionalism, really customer focus, really want to get you up to the level of trader that you want to be on. And that comes from, you know, being more active, you know, talking through the trades, making sure we're answering all questions, trading assistant, always active as ever, uh, answering every single question that you have on your charts. And you can see here, of course, I'm posting about my analysis and then I'm answering a lot of questions uh, from people that have, you know, questions about my charts. You can just see here answering every question where people are coming in with one um, that is getting answered. So, Along with that, we've obviously introduced live trading streams. We got a catalog, a big library of live streams too on the website. So yeah, this is the year where we've really upped our level of professionalism, really, really want to see you succeed. And so if you are interested in learning to trade, there is one place to be, right? Chart Champions. We got the whole platform, everything that you need from the trading journal to the competitions to the educational library itself, right? Everything in one place for you via chartchampions.com. So if that's of interest to you, you know where to check it out. And a lot of people that were here from 21, 22 coming back and, uh, you know, as they say, it's a world of difference, way more uh, focused focused on the customer and helping you, you know, you, that, that's the reason we're here at the end of the day. We want to see you succeed and we've really managed to change our, you know, thought processes and understand, you know, how to best help you through the, you know, we've been running a, for nearly five years now as, as chart champions. Of course, I've been trading prior to that, but chart champions itself as an educational company has been now five years. And the more we've been around, the more we've understood the best uh, ways to help. And, you know, we've really now come to our, I, I feel like the top level of, of where we want to be. So if you want to check that out, you know where to get it, chartchampions.com. Um, anything else I wanted to mention? I uh, might talk about this for one one or two minutes. Very quickly, I'll mention that uh, I know a lot of people are, um, well, a lot of people that are based in the Netherlands are having questions at the moment about regulations on exchanges and particularly Bybit because I know that they are um, going to be limiting um, traders from the Netherlands. And I think that I'll just say this, of course, as always, do your own research. I've already talked about this to the champion members a lot, but ultimately you will still be able to trade on Bybit. It's just, you're not going to be able to have high leverage trading. You'll have access to times 10, um, uh, leverage as a maximum. So if that is not something you want, if you want to trade with high leverage, even though I didn't recommend it, uh, there is an option of being X, right? And you can have access to the deals uh, that we get via the deals page on our website. And Bing X currently we got a 6,200 reward. 
uh, via our affiliate link. And BingX is a non-KYC exchange, so you do not need to KYC. Of course, we'd always recommend accessing with a VPN, um, but that's for everything on the internet, right? And then with BingX, you got non-KYC, and you know it's a, it's an option that you can be using if you are no longer wanting to use Bybit. Of course, I love to use Bybit. I'm happily trading there as a UK citizen, but. Uh, yeah, being X is our other option. And the third option, if you're interested, is prop firms is Top Step. So now we have that partnership with Top Step 2. So yeah, I'll just put that out there for people that are interested. You can get that via the deals page for all the latest and best exchange deals possible with people that we partner with and you know use ourselves. So with that said, that's all I want to mention on that. And now in terms of the next targets that i have okay so we're trading this range until it breaks and we do expect it to break relatively soon this is not a strong range in terms of the levels that we're actually at so above us we have a really nice value area high so this is our previous range back from 2021 2022 right uh value area high so this is now come into a very big zone Okay, and I'll show you this, what I mean on a daily time, actually a weekly time frame. So if we just hide that parallel channel a second, we'll come back onto the weekly. We all know this is the Bybit chart, the most respected chart when it comes to levels. We had the value area low previous range, perfect resistance, eventually broke through. We hit the point of control, 20% pullback. And then above us, we have the value area high. What you can see here is that comes in at $54,569, more or less. And what we can do is pull a whole range. And then that top of the value area high, as you can see, comes in at $55,225. So this is our next value area high targets above us. Okay, that we have as our next strong resistance. And this is our previous range value area high to the value area high at around $55,000, right? So that would be our next targets above us if we are continue to continue this uptrend. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, the halving, uh, you have to know that I am not really a person that is either bullish nor bearish from the halving. I'm just trading the charts. I'm not really bothered if there's a halving or not. All I want to know is my next levels and my next trades. And that's the way that I consistently make profits by ignoring kind of news or fundamentals and just trading the technicals and the charts. So halving or not, I'm not bothered. That's my next level to the upside that I have interest in taking a short trade. Okay. Of course, there will be levels above that if we are to be breaking through that we can be aware of. But for now, the value area high would be my next level of interest, okay? So with that mentioned, I then want to talk about what I have in terms of support. And um, here is a little bit more interesting, right? Um, because we have like more support closer by. The resistance is not too much. So we have in terms of the range, if we are to be breaking to the downside, the next area of interest, I would say, would be actually coming in. So I want to show you a really nice uh, uptrend pull. So what we can actually do is from the start of the uptrend to here, this is one pull that I would like, and you can see the value area high coming in there. And then from this last area of consolidation to the start of the previous range consolidation, you can see this is where we have a point of control. So you have a point of control, the value area high, the daily and a naked point of control, all in this zone, which would mean taking out another fake out of $50,000. So you can see that all around 49,500 ish, give or take a few hundred dollars either side of this value area high. Very nice first zone of confluence. If we lose that, of course, we then are moving back down to $47,000, more uh, bearishly viewed at that point. But this would be our next major um, area of support that we would want to see held in terms of holding what we have seen during this uptrend once again, which is a period of higher lows. You can see these are all higher lows. So if we do want to hold another higher low, we're really going to have to see it put in at this zone. If we do start to break down this higher low structure, the last area of support would be this around $47,000, because if we lose that, then I think we're in for a very big retracement. Okay. So this for me would be our major support zone to hold the higher lows. This would be the line in the sand which if lost, I do think we get a very big retracement. For now, I do remain bullish. I do remain 
with the perspective we can hit our higher targets, major, major pivot targets. Okay. For me, the pivot that we had at forty uh fifty two thousand dollars from the end of December is not actually that important to me uh, anymore because of the fact the reaction has been weak, a little bit choppy around here. Yes, we could get that weekly close down below, and that where is where I would confirm weakness on a sign of weakness, right? As we have not seen a sign of weakness right now, I am not going to be confirming, hey, I do think the pivot is in. OK, so if we see a sign of weakness, which comes with a loss of support, I will turn bearish while we are holding higher lows, while there has not been any significant bearish reaction, while we are not even forming bearish divergences, I do remain with a bullish perspective and I am looking for higher prices and targets to be hit. As mentioned again, we do have the local trade of the trend. OK, of this range to be trading. So let me just hide this and I will end by reminding you of that. Even though I got my bullish bias, uh, we do have this range to be trading. So what can we be doing right now? We can be looking at this as our new local range. Look for shorts at the high, longs at the low. So if we are to get a shorter range high and then we get a very big drop to the downside, hey, um, that's why you trade the range until it breaks. It's as simple as that, because then you can put yourself in a short position and then get a major drop to the downside. OK, I do expect bullish continuation, but even though I am bullish, even though I am in a long and chill mindset right now, if I get a short opportunity, I will take it. Why? Because I'm not a perma bull that only thinks price goes up. I know price going to retrace. I know where I want to take my positions and I have a plan. And that's once again how I am. Uh, the trader I am. I'm very good at remaining patient, remaining with my plans until invalidation, recognizing signs of weakness, signs of strength. Signs of strength, of course, come when we hit major pivots like this, but we remain long and chill. I have my plans. I understand the reactions. This is following a bullish reaction. And then, of course, with weakness, we need to see significant rejections and loss of MS. So for me, that is it. I'm signing out this video. I hope that you have thoroughly enjoyed. As always, I would love it if you could leave a comment down below. I read every single one and every time I read them, it makes me happy. So uh, yeah, if you're feeling like giving back, you can just give this video a like, leave a comment down below and that will, uh, that will make my day. If you want to see more of me, and the rest of the coaches, you know where to get us via chartchampions.com. And uh, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm going to say thank you ever so much. Hope that you've really enjoyed and hopefully learned a little bit from this video. If you have learned a little bit, you know you'll learn a lot more when you become a member. Thank you ever so much. That's me signing out. Have a brilliant weekend. And yeah, let's continue to crush the charts. Cheers, champs. Thank you. And goodbye. Cheers.